To start off today's project, you're going to need two micro bits. One is going to have to have a breakout board, which basically allows you access to the pins of the micro bit. Uh, mine happens to have a battery pack on it as well. You're also going to need a robot um, with at least two servos connected to your wheels. So we'll be able to take the wires for these servos and wire them to our breakout board, which I'll show hopefully in another video. As well, you're going to need a micro USB to download your program, and that's about it for supplies. So let's go ahead and go to the Microbit website. So it's Microbit and then Make Code. I'm going to go ahead and Google that, and it should be the first thing to pop up. So I'll go ahead and click this first link right here. Perfect. So right here, I'm going to click the purple button to make a new project. Uh, make sure to give it a unique name that you're not going to forget. Uh, which project is which. So I'm going to go ahead and name mine Robot Remote Control. Oh, and my keyboard's goofing out a little bit, so let me rewrite that. So Robot Remote Control. All right, and then we'll go ahead and click the green button for Create. All right, so first thing we're going to want to do uh, is go over a little bit of what's going on here. So over on the left, there's all of these uh, libraries or like pre-created functions and blocks we can use. Uh, the first one that we're going to be needing to work from is the radio section. So what I'm going to do is grab the radio set group. So here you're setting the radio channel for both of your micro bits. So you want to choose a unique number. I'm going to choose the year I was born, which was 95. So now when I download this program, my remotes know that they're both on the channel 95. All right, so next thing we want to do is bring in an if statement for this forever loop. So I'm going to go to the logic section, then I'm going to bring in this if statement that already has a built-in else statement, and I'll stick it inside of the forever loop. So I actually want multiple if statements because these are going to be how we control the robot. So I want it to have a total of five open brackets, uh, four of these being forward, reverse, left, and right, and then one being stop. So then I'm going to go ahead and set that inside of each of these brackets, I'm going to send a radio number. So we'll go to the radio section and we'll bring in the radio send number block. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and set them 0 to 4. So there's five total, but since we're starting at 0, we're going to end up being 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So basically, I'm setting it up so that when we press a button, it sends one of these numbers so that when the other micro bit receives that specific number, it's going to turn on servos to run that. So let's go to radio again. We're going to say radio received number. So this will be the one that the actual robot that's driving when it receives a number, it needs to turn on servos. So we're going to get an if statement again. So we'll pull in the if statement. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus button four times here and then click the minus button once. So we actually want a condition on all of these if and else statements. On the other one, we only had four conditions and one else statement. This one, we basically have five if statements. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that window down so we can see what we've got going on here a little bit better. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the comparison. So if you go to logic, there's this equals sign that says zero equals zero. So this is going to be how we compare values. So we're going to say uh, if the received number is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, or 0. I'm going to go ahead, instead of going back to the logic section every time, I'm just going to right click and say duplicate. So you can do the same thing. Just right click on the block and say duplicate. And then for the first section, I want to fill it with the variable received number. So I'm going to click on received number, drag that into the starting spot for all five of them. And then we're going to compare the received number and we're going to say if we received the number zero through four, uh, like we did over here where we're sending the numbers. So if we receive zero through four, that's going to tell it how to do the different things with its motors. All right, so we've got those set. So next I want to set up the conditions that send those numbers. So we're going to be working with the inputs next. So starting off, I want to say if we're pressing both the A and the B button on the micro bit, and this will be to drive forward. Let me scoot this over. And then next, I want to do just the A button has been pressed. And then third, I want to do when the B button has been pressed. 
And then lastly, we'll go ahead and do when the logo is pressed, which is at the very bottom um, as our fourth input, since there's only two buttons in the logo. I'll scoot this guy over so we can still see. So now we need to tell it what to do with its motors once those buttons get pressed. So the button gets pressed, sends a number, it receives the number. If it receives that number, it does whatever's inside that statement. So we'll go to advanced and then down to the very bottom, extensions, and then there's this green servo extension. So click on that, and that's going to add a whole extra library over here on the left. So I'm gonna click on servos. And then inside of that, there's some whole new blocks that we can work with. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the continuous servo block. I'm gonna try copying and pasting this time. So control C, control V. I'm gonna keep doing control C, control V uh, until I have two continuous servo blocks in every single if statement. It looks like we're running out of room, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Let me rearrange this so that way we can see everything. All right, so I'm gonna keep pasting that. I want two continuous servos in every statement except the last one. In the very last one, instead of running the servos, I actually want it to stop the servos. So I'm gonna bring in two stop servos. All right, so next we need to make sure our ports are set correctly. So on your breakout board, you'll have them labeled P0, P1, P whatever. So the, the two ports that I'm gonna be working with for mine, uh, I want them to be P1 and P2. So I'm gonna go through each of these and set them to P1, P2. Again, P1 and P2. And we'll go through each and every single one, make sure they're all set. The most important thing that it seems like uh, a lot of people forget is setting the stops. Make sure both stops are set to P1 and P2. Otherwise, your motor in might end up going forever and your robot's just gonna go in circles. So next we need to play with these values right here. So for the first one, I said it's going to be us driving forward. So to drive forward, we actually need to reverse our right wheel and keep our left wheel. So we'll make 150, one negative 50. Next uh, is when we press A, so I want it to turn left. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify this to be negative 50 and negative 50. So when we press B, I want it to turn right. So we can go ahead and leave that 150 and 50. And then when I press the logo, I want it to go in reverse. So the right wheel staying positive is actually correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and reverse the left wheel and set it as negative 50. So the left wheel is P1, the right wheel is P2. Uh, the last piece, if nothing's being pressed, it's gonna go ahead and just stop those. So let's go ahead and plug in our micro USB to our computer and our micro bit. And then we can go back and download our program. And then once the program has been downloaded to your computer, uh, there will be a little arrow next to it where you can say show in Finder. Uh, it might be a little bit different if you're on a Mac or a Chromebook. So I'm gonna click the little arrow to find my file. And then over here on the left, you can see the micro bit. So I'm gonna drag that file onto the micro bit or flash it onto the micro bit. It's gonna bring up this loading bar. Once that is complete, the program is on your micro bit. You'll want to repeat this process for both the micro bit on your robot, as well as the micro bit that's going to be your remote. So we're just running the same program. Then once you've got it, you can click your buttons and then your robot's ready to roll. You've got a full remote control robot that can drive forward, backwards, left and right. Thanks for watching.